we are on topic. I have no idea, but I know we're doing the, the 24 topics of the million dollar real estate agent. 19. Topic, 19. topic number 19. And business organizational model, page 244, for those of you who are following along at home. Cool. Now, I am actually going to go to page 242 before we go to page 244, and we're going to start with the systems documentation model of the millionaire real estate agent. What's interesting, I'm going to show you something. Hold on just a second. So my book from the front of the book, just filled with highlights, filled with notes. Then I got to the back of the book and I'm like, okay, what did I do? Stop reading. <laughs> So as I'm reading this this morning, I'm thinking this might be the first time I've read this, which was an aha for me. So uh, I am so glad that we're doing the 24 topics of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent because it's helping me make sure that I cover the entire book, which is super important. And this was one of the most common conversations that I have with real estate agents around how do I build a team and how do I set up systems for my team? Well, the answer to those questions are going to be in this conversation today. So Gary starts with even agents who understand the importance of documenting their methods may not follow through because of the perceived difficulty involved. So words matter. We can stop right there and just have a conversation. We think that creating systems, that creating a notebook that documents everything we do is going to be a lot of effort and we don't do it because we buy into the myth that it's harder than it is. Writing a manual is something that you've never done and usually appears to them to be very difficult. It's not difficult. It just takes time, time that could be spent listing and selling homes. So you'll hear, I'm too busy. <clears throat> and you're absolutely right. You are busy and yet this is important. The truth is that documentation does require some patience, persistence, and organization. That's why we advocate that you enlist the help of your first hire. That's your administrative help to get you successfully through the process with a minimum of lost sales time. Now, sometimes you have to slow down to speed up. So even if it's going to take time, it's important and you need to take the time in order to document everything that you do. Skipping to the middle of the page, step one of the process will be almost completely led by who? By you. Unless your assistant has prior real estate experience, you must also realize, so Monica's within earshot of this, if you were to hire Monica as your lead administrative assistant, she could come in and create the entire, mo entire model for you because she's done this for 15 years. And you want to hire her? Go ahead. <laughs> and she's going to yell at me. <laughs> yeah, she said, what the heck are you talking about over there? Step one of the process will be almost completely led by you unless your assistant has prior real estate experience. You must also realize that this is a process, not a project. A project has, a, has an end date. A process goes on and on and on and never stops. Your first pass at trying to list all the things you do will doubtless be full of holes you will want to plug later. In other words, here's what I'm hearing Gary say. He's saying it doesn't have to be perfect. That's another thing that stops us from doing it because we want to do it perfect. If it's our personality type to ready, aim, fire, sometimes we can get in stuck with ready, aim, 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 fire. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start in order to be great. The point of the process is really to get a working operational ma manual in place and then add to it and improve it constantly over time. All right, at the bottom of the page, Gary goes on to say, drill down over time and don't take any of your processes for granted. 
But if I'm hesitating in doing this, guys, it's because I'm checking to see who's in the waiting in the whatever that room is called and make sure that I let everybody in. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, so I am, Victoria. You'd be proud of me. I am looking, making sure that I do that. Great job. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. So drill down over time and don't take any of your processes for granted. It is much easier to cut steps out when feedback from your future staff helps you understand which aspects are necessary and repeatable versus which aspects are just a function of your personality. And here's the truth. As well as you personally do something, it can be improved upon. And the fact that unless you write down, and the fact is that unless you write down how you currently do it, you won't really be able to improve it. So let's take a look at what this process looks like. <clears throat> I'm gonna share my screen. <sighs> Wish me luck, I think I'm gonna get this right. <laughs> we'll see. There it is. Awesome. All right, we're gonna go slow here. I want you to write down detailed notes for notes on this. And if you want a copy of this, I, I can copy this and send it to you by email too. <laughs> All right, so the millionaire real estate agents, first step, take out a notepad and write down all the things you do as bullet points, leave nothing out. It will be a long list. What I do, and that's you as a real estate agent, answer phones, show homes, create ads, CMAs, open houses, on and on and on and on. The list that I shared with you several weeks ago had 158 items on it. So this is gonna be a really long list. This is everything you do in order to run a successful real estate practice. <laughs> Step two is then break that list down into six to 12 key categories, communication, buyers, sellers, contracts, and marketing. The next step is each of those categories gets its own page and your job is to copy all the activities from step one under the appropriate categories. Now you're creating a manual, you're creating a handbook that once this is complete, you're gonna be able to hand this off to the person who is responsible for running your team. Once you've completed this, as you bring in more assistants and more members who are a part of your team, this becomes your operational manual that everybody on the team gets. It's a playbook. The next step is place all of those category pages in a three ring binder with tabs for each category and a table of contents. How cool is that? The next step is go to the first tab and for each item under it, create a new page with that action as a heading. In other words, operational manual, next tab is communications. Under communications, we answer the phone, we handle emails, we handle, I have to go in really close to be able to see that, faxes. Well, you could tell this book was written 18 years ago. So, uh, <laughs> Does anybody still own a fax machine? Uh, and you make calls and you have a system for everything. So for example, answering the phone. We answer the phone on the third ring system. We answer the phone. It's a great day at the Dietz team with Keller Williams Realty. This is John. How may I help you? It's a system. When you order something at... Chick-fil-A, and you say, thank you, the response you get is my pleasure. It's a system. So there's a system for everything you do. It's also part of the system to use the person's name that you're speaking to within the first 30 seconds of the conversation. In other words, again, one minute while I admit everybody, and answering the phone, the system is, thank you for calling the Deeds team. Thank you for calling. It's a great day with the Deeds team at Keller Williams Realty. This is John. How may I help you? 
And Victoria says, I'm calling in reference to 123 Main Street. I was wondering if you can give me some information on the price. I immediately know who I'm speaking to. Hello, Victoria. It's nice to talk to you immediately. And I'm going to, it's a system. I'm going to use her name throughout the conversation. Again, it's a system. We have a system for returning phone calls. So if somebody leaves a message, the system is we expect to return that call within blank period of time. And there's a system for how that con for how we're going to have that conversation. There's a system for text me message communications, for email communications, for everything we do. Under sellers, there's a system for feedback. When we take a listing and we put that property on the market, every time there's a showing, the system is we're going to get feedback within 24 hours and we're going to call the seller and we're going to give the seller feedback. There's a system for that. If you're a part of a team, if I'm Eddie's lead administrative assistant, part of my job is to call those sellers and give them feedback. And the system is, good morning, Lauren. This is John Dietz with the Eddie Saeed team. And Eddie asked me to give you a call. He wanted me to share feedback from yesterday's showing. It's a system. Okay, I'm gonna leave this page up here so you guys can ask questions and we can have a conversation and talk to me. John. Um, yes, I, hi Camille. Hi, good morning. I see there's um, six categories, but you said um, that it should be, uh, there's only five here, but you mentioned six. What is the sixth one? There it is. <laughs> I just yeah. didn't have the whole page on the screen. so. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. So step six, wow, yeah. you guys got me, good job. Okay. Take, take each action page and detail exactly how you want that item to be done. So that's exactly what I was just talking about, Camille. So for example, in answering the phone, no more than three rings, there it is. Got it, thank you. Yeah, my system would also be no calls go to voicemail. So if I have a team and there are five people on my team, there's me, two administrative assistants mm -hmm. and two buyer agents. We're all in the phone, we're all in the office together during lead generation time. And when that phone rings, it rings at every single desk in the office. And everybody knows that if you've heard two rings, somebody's gonna answer that phone on the third ring because it never goes to voicemail. It's a system. Lastly, add the appropriate forms, scripts, and dialogue. Examples behind each action page. For example, again, give everybody on your team the script for answering phone calls, the script for giving feedback, the script for having updated market analysis conversations. So every Friday, we're gonna call every seller that we have listed on the market, whether our listing inventory is five homes, 10 homes, or 50 homes, every Friday, we're going to communicate with every seller. We're going to give them an update on the market. And there's a system for when a seller asks, my home's been on the market for 30 days. I haven't had any offers and no one's looked at my home in the last two weeks. There's a system for that. Again, if I'm Eddie's listing manager, my response would be, you know, Camille, Eddie would say that the market's talking and the market is suggesting that we might be at the wrong price, that we might be attracting the wrong buyers. It sounds like the market is rejecting our offer. My recommendation would be to have Eddie give you a call and go over an updated market analysis. Can I schedule time for him to do that later today? It's a system. Talk to me, guys. Raise your hand or just talk. How many of you have an operations manual? How many of you have started to create an operations manual? If you haven't started to create an operations manual, how many of you are now going to go to page 242 through page 244 and start working on creating an operations manual? I guess that you don't have to be a team or a team leader on a team to, to actually have this. We can have it individually as an individual um, 
agent. You, sh you should. Okay, thank you. I'm so glad I came today. <laughs> yeah, you should. Here's the, here's the reason why, Camille, because everything is a system. I'm not a huge systems person. It doesn't mean that I don't appreciate systems. I'm just saying it's not my strength. Now, that would be, again, Monica's strength. That's one of the reasons we made such a great team. However, you have to start out with an eight-lane eight lane highway. You don't wait until your one-lane highway has too much traffic to build an eight-lane highway. Start as if you're building a $50 million team, Camille. What would their operation manual look like once you have a $50 million team? start creating that manual today. Thank you. Yeah, and then when you make that first hire, you're just gonna give them your operations manual. You're gonna go, here you are. Here's how we run the business. <laughs> Starbucks is a franchise, yes. McDonald's is a franchise, yes. Yes. Chick-fil-A is a franchise, yes. Mm -hmm. Do yes. you believe they have an operations manual for how they do everything? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you went, if you went to Starbucks in Fort Lauderdale, are you going to get exactly the same cafe latte <laughs> as you would in Seattle? Is it going to be different? Is a quarter pounder different in Atlanta than it is in San Francisco, or is it the same quarter pounder? It's consistent. It's the yeah. same. Yep. John, the one hey John, good morning. Good morning. I'm going to stop sharing because I like to look at you guys. Talk. Yeah, this this is Marta. I had the opportunity of visiting the Toyota production plant in Argentina, and that is a production line that is impressive because most people that have Toyotas they know that they focus on quality, right? And and for you to provide quality, have it had to be consistency in the way you do things, right? Yes, and that's a yes, principle yes. That, that they have implemented in marketing. They have implemented in all the areas of the business because when your customer knows what to expect, expect from you is where you uh, uh, provide value and add value to the services that you do. So that's yes. why it's important to have those process consistent. Yes. <laughs> also. I love it. I agree with that. And I also agree with the fact for it to be duplicatable and for you to have a business that runs without you. you have have, I think the most, oh, I'm sorry. You have to be able to have something that it's, it's, it's consistent with your standards. I agree a hundred percent. And again, every single Walmart in the world is exactly the same system. It's the same process, whether you're a fan of Walmart or not, Michael Topo. <laughs> it is the same system with every single Walmart that you go into. Just imagine if they say, ah, we'll figure it out. We're just going to wing it. You stand up here and you kind of, you know, this, this is where you stand and uh, you'll figure it out. <laughs> no. John, Michael. the one thing... I was going to say is the most important thing actually I found was when he said loose leaf binder. And the reason I bring it up is having spent a lot of time on, on what they call systems thinking, systemic um, operation is that it's a living document. When you do uh, yes. a um, operating plan, you have to have key points, particularly if you have a, your organization grows of how you're going to uh, I actually review each part of it periodically to update it. And as something new comes in because it's living, it's not static. This is just the start. It's a whole culture thing. I love it. And how cool is it that we are a part of a company that has provided us with this yeah. playbook for building a successful business. Guys, holy cow. I'm telling you, this doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. Not in the real estate world. Doesn't really exist and it doesn't. <clears throat> Right, Diane? Except in school. And, and even in school, you don't, I, I know this because I took <laughs> business classes and all that stuff. Yeah, I never learned anything like this. Yeah, right. Yeah. I retired from the Navy and we, we always had an SOP, a standard operating procedure manual, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? So I, I don't know why I didn't think about that, you know, until you're bringing it up now and it's not the first time I heard it. 
Camille, I agree. And, and thank you for serving, by the way. Um, so honored to have you on this call. And I study every book written on the Navy SEALs. If the Navy SEALs were involved, I'm reading it. Yay. You talk about systems, you talk about standards. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Give me a couple more. Come on, guys. It's 826. No, I was with Camille on that one. I was an assistant professor running a research lab. And I that's what I had my graduate students do is to document everything they were doing to create an SOP. And yet this is like mind blowing. I never thought to do this for my business now. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you go on a listing appointment, there's a system. If you take my 14 step listing presentation class, you'll mm -hmm. see there's a system for everything. There's a system for parking getting out of your car, knocking on the door and touring the home. We don't just say, go on listing appointments. No, we tell our agents, this is exactly the step-by-step -step system you're gonna follow when you go on a listing appointment. When, this, when the homeowner opens the door, there is a system for how we greet that homeowner. Good morning, Mindy, it's John Dietz. We had an appointment for five o'clock and it's five o'clock, may I come in? system and a lot of people think that systems don't allow for flexibility or creativity and yet they give you the foundation and the freedom to be able to do that because when you know the system you know where you're standing you know what's next you know what you need to do and that allows you to it, the navy seals are a wonderful example they are probably some of the most disciplined people and yet they walk into situations that they might have no clue of, that things will blow up at the, the you know, how do you plan for that? Well, you don't, you plan by, you have the systems. You, it's like the, you know, when somebody's involved in a, a high stress situation, they always talk about, they go back to their training. When an airliner, when an airline pilot, a pilot is in an emergency situation, what's their first step? Yes. Pull out the checklist. Because they, when you have the checklist on some paper, you're not going to forget your items. Powerful. Michael, that's so awesome. And you're still Sam. Why are you Sam today? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I need to check my, my login, unfortunately. Listen, guys, everybody wants freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you a question. A train on the train tracks, does it have freedom? No, it doesn't. It has no choice. It can't say, well, you know, forget these train tracks. I'm going to do my own thing. And a train without train tracks ain't going anywhere. Well, it has Henry Ford freedom. You can have any color you want as long as it's black. <laughs> it can go forwards and backwards and follow the track. There you go. Right? There you go. I put in yeah. the chat asking if anybody has an SOP that's a solo agent or whipping off and duplicating rather than reinventing the wheel. Oh, it's so awesome. Uh, Mindy, are you a part of the Survive to, Survive to Thrive coaching community on Facebook? Yes, I was probably one of the first people to sign up. You rock. Please put that on, my, on that page. <laughs> okay, we'll do it. Right? That. Yeah, that's, that's where we share with one another and share ideas with one another as well. You got it. Love it. Okay, one more, it's 830. Hey, John. Yes, hi, Carol. Hi, this is Carol from Chicago. I have a virtual assistant and she's been creating a uh, operations manual for all the things that she does. Everything mm -hmm. I pull out for marketing and all the different plans, um, event planning, she's creating a, a operationals manual for that. What I see that I need to add is what I actually do mm -hmm. in my business. And when I think I don't have a system, mm -hmm. you just brought out everything I do is a system because I do the same things repeatedly yeah. and it's a habit. So this is great. Cool. Thank you. All right, guys. Great call. All right. Time to get to work. So what is work? 
uh, your first domino. Your first domino is lead generation. So what is lead generation? Lead generation is 20 conversations, not 19, not 18, not 17. If you have 17 conversations and you settle because you're close enough, the 18th conversation could have been a million dollar listing that you didn't get. And you'll never know that you didn't get it because you didn't make the call. So it's 20 conversations. Your conversations are care calls, not sale calls. So lead by adding value, lead with care. And every conversation includes who do you know that's looking to buy or sell a home? Otherwise, it's not a real estate conversation. It's just a conversation. And it doesn't count if it doesn't include real estate. The focus of every conversation includes get an appointment, get a referral, or add somebody to your database. Find somebody today that's thinking of buying a home or thinking of selling a home. Doesn't matter if it's 30 days from now, six months from now, or a year from now, because a year from now, you're going to need leads. You're going to be listing homes. There are no bad leads, just bad real estate agents who don't follow up. Get face to face with someone today who's thinking of selling their home, thinking of buying a home, and then follow up forever. And lastly, don't forget, reject rejection. No is not a word that lives in your vocabulary. No just means not yet. And make it a great day. Thank you, John. John. Thank you, John. 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 Yes, ma'am. John. Tomorrow, um, James Shaw is supposed to be having his, oh, right. um, I guess, return for the shift, which okay. is at 8 o'clock in the morning. He's going to do it every week. And it's supposed to be every Wednesday. Yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday. Yeah. He's going to do it every week. And so we still do it 8 o'clock or... Just asking. We're, we're still on for eight o'clock. And if some of you are not going to be with me because you're with James Shaw, I like completely understand you're not going to hurt okay. my feelings. But we we Thank are still on. It. Yeah, and I and I and I will record it, of course. And by the way, thank you for saying that because it reminded me that I need to remind you every day this week that I will not be here Friday. So we will not have a call on Friday. Uh, okay. I have a. Uh, a CAT scan to prepare for surgery in November. And the only time they could do that is at eight in the morning. So uh, yuck, <laughs> I'll be laying on a table with not having a good time. Um, and we're here tomorrow, 8 a.m. See everybody tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Make it Thanks, a good day. Thank you. Thanks, John. You got Thank it. You. Uh,